Welcome back YouTube family for another Megan Flips It DIY. Today we are going to be making a snuffle mat for Harper. We are going to start out with one of the Dollar Tree's cleaning cloths in the automotive section, a two pack of baby mittens, the baby washcloths, and the burp cloths. And later you'll see I will bring in a chamois wipe from the Dollar Tree also. So these snuggle mats online can range anywhere from $15 to over $30. And with Harper being young and high energy, I don't want her to get bored doing the same exercises. So I decided I was going to put one of these together and I was going to try to do it on a budget. So I start out by removing the elastic around the mittens. It's not really good elastic. Uh, it broke pretty easy but I didn't want her to be chewing on the pockets that I'm making with these mittens and accidentally get that elastic off. Once I remove the elastic, I do a rolling hem and I use my wonder clips to hold that hem in place so that I can do a zigzag stitch on all four mittens with my sewing machine. The reason that I'm going to be using a zigzag stitch is because I need the little bit of a give so when she is rooting with her nose, it will still stretch. Then I take the burp cloth and I cut it in probably about four to five inch strips and then I roll them around. Now this burp cloth, the nice thing about it is it kind of acts like a jersey material. It has some stretch. So again, I go in and with the zigzag stitch and I zigzag these strips down and I found like a t-shirt or a jersey shirt if you pull it as you go, it kind of makes it wavy. So I thought that was pretty cool and it gave her a little bit more of an obstacle when I sew these on to try and get out her bits of food. Um, I don't give her a ton of cookies. I usually do her treats around mealtime so that I can incorporate it as her food and give her something to do because the vet keeps telling me she's too chunky. <laughs> she's not chunky, she's a baby. <laughs> but, um, so then I take the, oh, the washcloths, yes. So I take the washcloths and I just do a stitch across it, like a plus sign in the center of it, because that's going to give me corner pockets underneath each, um, corner of the burp cloth. Then I'm going to take my burp cloth strips and again with my wonder clips, attach them to the end. Okay, so I had a little issue with my sewing machine. It doesn't take thick material at all. <laughs> um, so I'm pushing the material underneath the presser foot so that the, f and helping the feed dogs carry it through to the back. Once that's done, all I do is loop the burp cloth strips up and stitch so that I will have loops going the whole way down this little square area that I can slide bits of her food into the loops. She likes to get the loops in her mouth and chew. So uh, if I were to do this again, what I think that I would do is kind of do like a loose weave with these strips and stitch at the bottom and at the top, if you know what I mean. That way she could push them around, but not have to like move the loop out of her way to get the food. Cause all she does is try to chew the loop, chew the, the food through the loop, if that makes sense. So you can kind of see there what I mean with the loops. And the problem with this is because I've stretched some of them, they all did not end at the same place. So don't worry, I cover that up here in a little bit. But then I put my mittens now pockets on and I only stitch one side and I make sure that it's open enough at the top that she would be able to get her nose in to the mitten pockets, if you want to call them that, <laughs> that's what I'm calling them. But what I found with these mitten pockets is that um, 
it's easier for her to get to the food if I flip the mittens up, set the food underneath. So, I mean, they still work, but again, I would probably do something different. Um, this would be a great snuffle mat for a small dog, like a chihuahua. <laughs> but our chihuahuas have no interest in this mat um what i did here is i took a pink washcloth and i kind of did a, a i did like three folds in it and i ran it through the sewing machine on the ends and i can remove the stitches but i wish that's where i stopped because again she was having a hard time getting the food out of the pockets I made by making three folds in the washcloth. So, um, and I'm just letting you guys know this, that way if you decide you're going to recreate this, that you know what worked and what didn't and why. And then for the green washcloth, I just want a smaller X cause I'm going to be kind of doing like, all right, so, it was supposed to be like a flowery looking thing, so she had to dig into it. But what I end up using on this one is that I put her food underneath of it in the little corners that the X makes on the washcloth because she can't seem to get to the food if I put it inside the washcloth. And you'll see, because once I sew the little X or plus sign or Cross. Okay, now here's where I had issues with my sewing machine. I had to do a tear down and a cleaning on my sewing machine, and <clears throat> I did not film um, when I turned my sewing machine back on. I didn't film the sewing on of the green washcloth, so here I'm going to do it with this little lion and giraffe washcloth. So here you see with my Crayola marker, I folded it in half and marked how, down, how far down I wanted to sew. Then I open up the washcloth, fold it the other way so that the fold is going across the line. And then I fold it again in half and then I fold it in half up to the corner so that I can mark how far down that side will go so that I kind of have like an even plus sign on it and I sew it on with a straight stitch and once this is done I gather up the four corners and I fold them on top of each other and then I place a stitch going across the top of the stacked four corners all right I'm trying to explain this the best way possible but once that's done this gives you that flower, squared flower, and you can see there's the corner underneath, and then you could put the food in the center. Here's where the Dollar Tree Handy Shammy comes in. This is my favorite part of the entire mat, and this is the best part as far as keeping Harper occupied while I get dishes done or switch a load of laundry. That's usually what I use this for, but what I do is I just cut the handy chamois into strips. I did two strips, probably about four to five inches. I folded it in half and clipped it with my wonder clips. And then I just put cuts in it, but not the whole way down to the cut edge that I folded together. And then I start to sew it with a straight stitch. And as I sew it, I am spinning the mat and curling the handy chamois around and i will give you a close-up here when this is almost done but you can see that i have done the first uh, row of the flower and to sew it on i just push that for that top flowery part back with my right hand position the handy chamois in there and then run it through my sewing machine in a straight stitch look how cute that flower looks and the little green washcloth almost kind of looks like a leaf 
Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, but I think this mat turned out really cute and Harper really enjoys it. And don't forget, if you like what you see here, give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. And when the bell appears, if you click on it, you can choose to be notified every time I upload a video. Also, if you have any suggestions for things that you would like to see in future videos, leave me a comment in the comment section. And until next time, happy crafting!